Hello, in today's video we're going to be talking about mixed salts. We're actually going to be talking about two different topics. Mixed salt and gas forming reactions. They kind of lead into one another. So mixed salt are the last naming system that we're going to learn for the rest of the semester. We've gone through all those different naming systems. Main group metals to nonmetals, transition metals to nonmetals, nonmetals to nonmetals, polyatomic ions, acid bases. Uh, you know a lot of naming. This is the last naming system that I want to cover for this, this course. So these are known as mixed salts, these bottom two are. But first, let's remember how to name something that has a polyatomic ion. We know that the phosphate polyatomic ion has a negative three charge. So in order for this to be a neutral compound like it's shown here, the sodium has to have, there has to be three positive sodiums. The way we name this is very simple. We name the metal, we never change the name of the metal. Um, and then we're gonna, add on the name of the polyatomic ion. We don't change the ending of the polyatomic ion, we just remain, it just is, remains the same as what it always is. Phosphate is just phosphate. So Na3PO4 is called sodium phosphate. Now we can change that around a little bit. We know that there are three positives um, from those sodiums because there are three different sodiums. However, we can take away one of the sodiums and, and replace it with a hydrogen. This is something more uh, different than what we've ever seen before. This has two sodiums, a hydrogen and a phosphate. All the sodiums and the hydrogens, they act as your cations, every single one of them. Each of these has a plus, so there are still a total of three plus, which balances out this phosphate. The way we name this, this will be the only time that you put a prefix in front of the metal's name. So if there are two, three, four, however many metals you have, you use the prefix if a hydrogen is contained within the, in the formula. So this is called disodium, there are two sodiums. Then we only have one hydrogen, so we can either say monohydrogen or hydrogen. In this case, we're just gonna say hydrogen. Um, disodium, hydrogen, and then we don't change the phosphate. So this Na2HPO4 is gonna be called disodium hydrogen phosphate. Okay. So that's what, how we name mixed salts. It's one of the longest naming systems that we have. We can go one step further where we can replace the, another sodium with a hydrogen. So now we have two hydrogens and one sodium. We still have a total of three plus, so that's a neutral compound here. And in this case, we only have one sodium, so we know that the first element, we never add a mono. And up here in the middle, the second element, we're not gonna add a mono either. We're just gonna say disodium hydrogen phosphate. But here we're gonna have, drop the mono, just say sodium. Now that we have two hydrogens, we do use a prefix here. So this would be sodium dihydrogen, and then we don't change the phosphate. So going all the way down, sodium phosphate, we don't have to change anything. We don't use a prefix here because there is no hydrogen. Here we do use a prefix for that sodium because we have a hydrogen. This is now a mixed salt. So we're gonna have to identify how many sodiums are present, plus how many hydrogens are present. Of course, there could be a mono here, but we're gonna drop that, we're lazy chemists. Um, lastly, we can replace the la uh, third, or the, the second sodium with a hydrogen, and now we drop the mono in front of the sodium and say di, because there are two hydrogens, and a phosphate. Okay, so why in the world did we, we talk about these mixed salts? So, we're gonna move on with this. We're gonna talk about gas forming reactions now. So this is another thing that you're gonna be able to predict what products are gonna come out of a reaction. If we have sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate, HCO3, H NaHCO3, the common term is sodium bicarbonate here, although we now know how to name the mixed salt, this would be sodium hydrogen carbonate, and we add to that an acid, HCl in both, so sodium uh, carbonate is a solid, sodium bicarb is also a solid, this is baking soda down here. If we add HCl to either one of these, what we're gonna end up getting um, is we're gonna have a double displacement reaction, so we'll end up getting H2CO3, which in this case is gonna be, is gonna be um, aqueous, plus the sodium's gonna react with the chlorine, NaCl, which is aqueous. Okay. Now, I'm gonna really cross this out because it's not truly what forms. So we'll, we'll move on, we'll see what happens to that, that H2CO3. Na, uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate, 
reacts in the same way. You produce H2CO3, which is going to be aqueous, but we're going to cross that out, plus sodium chloride. You can balance these equations if you need to. Um, I'll leave that up to you guys to balance. The thing that we want to look at is this is going to, we're talking about gas forming reactions. Where is the gas coming from? If I were to put sodium carbonate and acid, I would get bubbles. This is how you make those volcanoes when you're in middle school. You take acetic acid, vinegar, and you add it to baking soda, sodium hydrogen carbonate. You get these bubbles. So where in the world is this gas coming from? Well, anytime you see H2CO3, that is a very weak compound and it's going to break apart. So if you see H2CO3 as a product, it's actually going to break down into CO2, which is a gas, and H2O, which is a liquid, no matter where it shows up, yeah, as long as it's on the product side. So this H2CO3 actually produces carbon dioxide and water. Same thing with this H2CO3. It produces carbon dioxide as a gas and water. So the reason why we talked about mixed salt was to talk about this bicarb, this um, hydrogen carbonate here. Um, it also works with anything that has a carbonate that has a double displacement reaction with an acid such that we get carbonic acid, that's what this is over here, H2CO3, um, which will then decompose into carbon dioxide and water. So anytime you have the CO3 on the, is, as the anion of a salt and you add it to an acid, you will always form CO2 and water. Now, I will never tell you that again. On the exams or quizzes or finals, this H2CO3 should always be changed to CO2 and H2O liquid. So there's your understanding. There's, there's our understanding of mixed salt and gas forming reactions. And with that, that's all I want to say for this video. Have a great night. I will see you all in class tomorrow.